Hi, my name is Forrest Schrott, and uh, I have a company called Liquid Fire Mantra. It's a ritual fire dance performance group and uh, a visionary jewelry company. Um, I've been doing the nomadic lifestyle, lifestyle for since 1996, and uh, I guess that's. Uh, 16 years or 18 years, something like that. Um, yeah, I've been doing uh, the Gypsy Nomadic Lifestyle for a very long time. Uh, traveling up and down, primarily west coast of the United States, going to music festivals and um, vending, uh, vending my uh, designs that I have produced in Bali, um, and also doing performance art. Um, and uh, I've been uh, on this alternative path for quite some time. And uh, it's been great. You know, get to explore and see a lot of a lot of places, meet a lot of really interesting people, and uh, um, a lot of creative inspiration constantly coming through. The trade-off is um, the challenge of finding a healthy biorhythm with not not necessarily having like a home for a long period of time where you can kind of drop in with the community and have like. Um, and build on a rhythmical cycle, but it has a larger biorhythm of this like a yearly cycle of going to one place to the next and having communities there that have been developing for many years. So it's there's always this kind of like balancing of you know more traditional way of living and uh, living in one area um, and having a house and uh, having a biorhythm, getting up at the same time, going to sleep at the same time generally, and uh, opposed to having the freedom and the nomadic lifestyle of not having to pay you know large amounts of uh, money on rent and um, but also not having a necessarily a dis defined biorhythm which I, for me as I've gotten older it's been probably the biggest challenge of maintaining a nomadic lifestyle. Tell us uh, about some of your favorite places or events to which you've traveled. <laughs> Oh man, there's been a bunch. Um, definitely the West Coast of the United States is a true treasure. Just There's so many amazing communities of artisans and healers and visionaries. Uh, people trying, um, trying out sustainable ways of living on a pretty high level. Um, you know, some of the hot spots on the West Coast of the United States are Ashland, Oregon, uh, Sebastopol, California, Santa Cruz, um, Portland, Oregon, um, but you get the entire Bay Area and different within the big cities. I'm seeing um, uh, incredible uh, uh, groups of people coming together in uh, alternative sustainable lifestyles, and it's becoming not so alternative, to be honest, um, which is great. That's what we were all going for. Um, a lot of it's centered around music and dance, but also a lot about yoga and healing arts um, and visionary art. Um, some of the worldly places that I've gone is Bali and Thailand um, and uh, Mexico, um, Costa Rica, uh, that's, oh yeah, Japan, um, Singapore. And uh, it's interesting because places I would have not have thought would have um, that strong cultural nomadic group of people actually uh, have I, I've, I've actually found a fair number of them maybe it's just that we kind of magnetize towards each other we know how to find each other um, and, and, and I, I'm at a distinct advantage because I'm navigating in the circus arts realm so um, when I'm traveling, I just look up the other circus art performers in the area, and then I'm instantly plugged in with whatever's going on. Yeah. Did you guys go to Boom also? Oh yeah. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to Portugal for Boom Festival um, with my performance group, and we vended. It was interesting because um, I felt like Southern Europe was not ready for what we had to bring. The color and the flavor and the flair of uh, West Coast uh, cultural family is um, has a, a lot of we just it's much more colorful it's a rainbow family whereas um, I feel like 
Um, Portugal at that time was going through a major economic collapse and um, people were not necessarily wanting to show their 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 flavor. They were more wanting to uh, um, kind of fit in a little bit more. They're wearing more uh, darker colors and toning everything down. So uh, I'd like to try it again sometime, maybe in a different economic climate. Yeah, I hear you. <clears throat> so did you become mobile as a necessity for your business lifestyle, or did you plan your business around your desire to be mobile? Um, I designed my business <laughs> around being mobile. Yeah. Because I, I loved going to festivals, I loved traveling to different communities, and uh, um, I wanted to have a way of doing that. And uh, I chose a business that was um, that I could have a lot of inventory and a small amount, so I didn't have to schlep too much gear. Hence, I do jewelry, and um, I already have to carry so much stuff already with the fire dancing equipment and fuel and dipping stations and props and costumes that I, I just really wouldn't have had the ability to uh, carry like a large clothing bins or any number of other things that I might have been producing. Yeah. What was your motivation when you first began the nomadic lifestyle? Um, my first motivation was um, to have fun, to learn, and to create communities by planting seeds in a lot of different places. Um, not really fully sure of what those seeds would um, grow into but um, really just having fun in the process. Um, that was, I think, my main motivation. And has your motivation changed at all now that you've done it for a number of years? Um, a lot of it's the same. You know, it's primarily motivated by having fun and learning, and having an, living an interesting life. You know, have, you know, just have this one life to, as an opportunity to to explore and learn and grow and, uh, and going for it, you know. Um, there is some things have changed. I, I um, uh, I'm more wise with my energy, taking a little bit more uh, consideration of long drives, and um, I really uh, choosing to be more potent uh, in the process of traveling. And, uh, and doing it in a way that's more sustainable. Yeah. Great. What are some of the most important skills or abilities that have enabled you to be more sustainable as this has evolved? Um, oh, there's a lot. Um, one is having a, a health and wellness practice. Super important. I, uh, um, something that I can take with me wherever I'm at. I can do my yoga practice. I can do my meditation. That's been really important. Um, uh, one skill is that uh, every place I go, I leave it better than I left it, so that I always have a home to come back to. And that's really like, that's part of the, like, the, the, the traveler's, um, the, 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 the primary rule of traveling is to leave things better than you left it. Um, uh, really finding great purpose in being in service to others, helping people on the way. Um, finding my success in the, in the creation of su helping others to succeed, that's been really helpful. Is um, the, the satisfaction that um, I get from helping someone else in, in their success is um, surpasses the satisfaction I get in my own success sometimes. But it's interconnected. You know, we're all in it together. On our own, we might have we on our mo on our own. On our own, we might not have it all together, but together we can have it all. And that's a quote from Wookie Foot, mm -hmm. one of the Minnesota uh, festival bands. <laughs> Do you feel um, what you're currently doing is the highest expression of your offering, or do you envision it evolving in some way into something else? Um, it's definitely at the certain levels of it is at the pinnacle of my expression right now. Some of it has actually had a pinnacle before, where I feel like uh, it had gone to a higher point when I was um, uh, had all this drive and I was fresh and I'm like ready to go. 
uh, and now I'm more looking at sustainability rather than um, having making the biggest noise. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, it's constantly evolving, and um, uh, I guess the uh, main thing that's evolved in me isn't the drive to be to prove anything, to prove uh, um, I'm doing it better than anybody else. More of like the more of the motivation of seeing how it can be sustainable in the long term that can support a family and that can support community as a whole and that it can support others and they're um, they're thriving yeah what are the most exciting aspects of what you do um well definitely uh, the performance art it's hard to beat that you know like getting on stage in front of like 15,000 people and lighting up my fire staffs or my fire poi and, um, and getting to share uh, a prayer with the masses. Um, that's really exciting. <laughs> um, I really love hitting up all the uh, hot springs. My rhythm uh, as I'm traveling is often going to festivals and music events and performing and then afterwards going to hot springs which I then supply jewelry and, uh, and sometimes repping some of my friends gear um, and then uh, at the hot springs getting to uh, dance and sharing healing arts and doing yoga with beloveds um, it's a really nice lifestyle yeah, after after um, long hard hours at a festival oftentimes super hot and dusty to uh, the cleansing cleansing waters the warm healing waters of a hot spring it's a good it's a good balance it makes for a nice biorhythm. I highly recommend it. Well, my next question was, what are the most tedious tasks? You, you kind of mentioned a few of those. Hot, dusty. Hot, dusty, <laughs> schlepping. Yeah. Yeah, hauling gear. Like, if you really want to know what, like, being a nomadic uh, merchant performer is, is it, it's being a schlepper con. And uh, that means, like, constantly packing, unpacking, moving gear around, uh, setting up, tearing down, Moving to the next thing, uh, a lot of driving. I think the driving is the most tedious. Um, that's the one thing that my body has really started to rebel against. And um, um, choosing, it's, it's made me make choices of not necessarily going to the events that I love the most, but going to the events that just are out of practicality the most. They're still fun, but are within um, three hour drive of me. Yeah. What advice would you give to somebody wanting to follow a similar path? Um, what kind of advice would I give to someone? Uh, if what, you met yourself, yeah, like ten or fifteen years ago, what advice would you give to yourself? Um, the advice I'd give myself is to. To find that balance of uh, in, in in the lifestyle of of um, staying within a, staying into uh, being able to go, to have regular sleeping patterns at certain times, being careful of the adre my adrenals so that I'm not blowing out my adrenals by like pushing it too hard, um, uh, and. Uh, really listening to uh, if something's a real push then not necessarily it isn't necessarily the right thing to push real hard that um, that our willpower can um, uh, end up overcoming logic and um, there's always a payment or there's always a you know consequence for that and uh, that would say that that would be my advice is to being aware of the consequence when it's pushing hard and uh, sometimes um, sometimes something is less uh, something sometimes something is has like a, a is it has a big shiny like looks like a big reward like oh I'm gonna go to this event I'm gonna make a bunch of money but I have to drive eight hours and I have to like I've got three days to get ready for it and I have to bend over backwards and bust a move to do it and I burn myself out um, and it turns out to be a really high risk endeavor 
Whereas like something simple like oh there was like there's a little um, a little music concert down the road, and I'll make a few hundred dollars at that. Um, sometimes all those little gigs add up, um, and uh, the motivation isn't necessarily or shouldn't necessarily be about the money. Um, it really is about the how how I can be most in my truth and what kind of lifestyle most reinforces me being in my truth. You know, how can my body be happy? How can my mind be happy? How can my emotions be calm and collective? So that um, those three parts of my being are, um, uh, are at peace. And when I'm at peace and when I'm in uh, my truth, I found that I am a magnet of, of abundance. Um, I noticed my sales at, at, in the booth drop like by 75% or more when I'm stressed out. But if I'm happy and I'm in my joy and my bliss, I'll go to an event and where it looks like I'm not going to make any money and I'll do really, really well. <laughs> but I'll go to another event where it doesn't look like I'm going to do well, at, or it looks like I'm going to really do well, but I got so stressed getting there that I just repulse everybody away from me. So uh, that's a good piece of advice right there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, last question. Any th any last thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers? Per uh, personal philosophy, uh, anything you just want to you know pay forward? Yeah, um, I got a few personal thoughts. It's just like um, some things have been helpful for me. One is uh, having multiple ways to make a living that are all in alignment with my passion and my love. Uh, what um, one uh, I feel like it's really important to have kind of a, a three-point um, uh, plan towards being sustainable um, financially. And one has to do with a, um, a, a service that's based on my time um, and skill that isn't reliant on any uh, external money. So that if um, I end up um, losing all my money, I'm like, let's say I'm in uh, Turkey or some place far away and I, I get my bag stolen and I lose all my money but I still have a way of getting by you know I, I, I've personally chosen uh, healing arts you know massage and, uh, and different forms of body work as well as yoga and teaching yoga um, so uh, I find that's really important and then uh, having a product that isn't reliant on my time because there's only so many hours in a day so having a product that can work itself and can um, that that isn't reliant on, so directly reliant on my time. That, that's that been really helpful. And of course, I chose the uh, the jewelry for that. And then um, and then a third thing, which could be any number of things. Of course, I, I chose uh, fire dancing because that's a really fun thing for me. Um, and uh, I do make money off of it. I teach and uh, I get paid for performances. Um, and I kind of got into the, the jewelry as a way of kind of liberating myself uh, to be able to fire dance and not count not rely on the money from that because uh, sometimes if you take your, you, what you love and you turn it into work you no longer love it so much but if you can make a if you can take what you love and allow it to work for you then you can stay in love with it um, and that's another piece of advice I would share with people who are aspiring to you know fulfill follow their dreams and, and go for it um, Another thing is uh, when embarking on a creative endeavor, I ask myself, how can this serve me in the long run? Or am I going to be in service to it in the long run? Because anytime there's a new creative idea, an endeavor that's started, it's starting a whole, it's a living thing and it needs to be fed, it needs to be taken care of. And um, really like balancing out, is it going to give the feedback loop that of sustainability that I'm wanting that's going to feed back to me so that it, I, you know, what is my goal in going into the endeavor? Um, and the more clearly defined I can, uh, I can go with, or the more clearly defined I can make that goal or how I, that, that project's going to serve me and serve the whole, um, the more likely it is to be successful. That's an excellent piece of advice. I've yeah. <laughs> noticed that many times in my own life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, did ten, I did takes to tend, um, takes on a life of its own, and pretty soon you're a prisoner to that idea. Mm. 
Do you have any uh, jewelry you could show us before we, uh, yeah, before totally. we shut this down here? I've got, a, I've, got, I've got another piece of advice. Okay. Um, focus, focusing on our successes rather than our mistakes will uh, create that um, atmosphere of success which will increase more success. If we focus on um, all the things that aren't working, it becomes a, uh, it just kind of brings you down. It brings, it, you know, I speak for myself, it's a problem. When I've, I've come into places where I was uh, having lessons, if I lost sight of my successes, um, I, I would, I've lost the, uh, the atmosphere of success. And, um, that doesn't really serve in fulfilling the goal. So my advice is focus on the successes. If you had 20 things to do in a day and you only made it to the post office and the other 19 things got, you know, had to be uh, postponed, um, focus on the fact that you got to the post office and slap yourself on the back and say, good job. And if you have some lessons to learn why you didn't get the other things done, don't ignore it. They make, make, uh, make adjustments and learn. Um, one of the greatest uh, shifts that I find in my consciousness is that process of uh, shifting the learning process from uh, one that's based on punishment that was kind of handed down to, uh, I feel like most people, as a way of learning, punishing is a tool for learning, uh, and punishment coming in the form of guilt, shame, regret, um, or, uh, or, you know, any other, you know, many other forms of punishment. Well, we, we, we don't have to learn in that way anymore. We can learn from our mistakes, and, uh, and then they don't become mistakes at all. Um, and we learn using uh, loving, loving kindness as our foundation. Um, yeah, as, you know, being highly evolved beings, that's, that's, the, that's the key. Um, yeah. I think I could just keep on going on with different things, but we can go on to the... Because there's some... Uh, some of the jewelry that yeah, I brought. Yeah, yeah. Show us, show us some pieces if you have them handy. Okay, I'd love to show you guys some of the art that I have created in Bali. I uh, I work with the indigenous people there, um, helping support their culture, um, honoring them, and uh, I work a lot with their own symbols. Um, I when going into a bit into my business, I really all the different facets of my business. Um, what was going to give me the the joy and inspiration? Um, to be motivated to do it wasn't the money, but really the opportunity to uh, to share and to ex uh, express myself in the form of prayer. And so all my jewelry pieces are, are based on prayers that have been um, brought into a, into a symbolic form as a pendant or a, um, a set of earrings. So. Uh, These are the Shakti Bhakti earrings. Here you go. There you go. Is that good? Yeah. Shakti Bhakti earrings. This is the matching creation pendant. Beautiful. This is the Palladian. The Merkaba. Kill a mosquito, show a piece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're battling mosquitoes here. Um, Oh, this is this is one of my favorites. This is the gratitude key. It says gratitude on the back. I like that It's got a little one. Balinese ohm wrapped around a heart. This is the uh, one of my masterpieces. That's the compass. It's got ohms opening up in the four directions in the middle, making up the petals of the flower of life. And the Sanskrit is all the different archetypes that creativity all the different archetypes that creativity can come through. And then the back side of it has the four elements bound together with the ether and then focalized into the wheel of life. 
So navigating the realms of creativity from our hearts and then bringing it into form so it can be shared with others. I make a smaller version too. Yeah, there's many more. That's a good start. <laughs> you, uh, tell us uh, where they can find it. What's oh, yeah. your website? You can, uh, you can check me out in the jewelry at liquidfiremantra.com. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome.